embrace our escaped genes. Often described as different sets of characteristics. So one might look at different leaf structures, different flower structures, different chemical compounds that are produced, and these characteristics are called phenotypes. And botanists have been investigating why plants are different uh, for the last couple hundred years and really determined that two things dictate a plant's phenotype. Its set of genes, or its genotype, and the environmental factors in which uh, surround the plant while it's growing. So when environmental conditions like light, temperature, humidity are acting as a selected force on a set of genes, that's what actually drives evolution. And you get novel sets of cannabis type plants um, from the interaction of environment factors uh, acting on a set of differences in genes. So because uh, genotypes and environment can produce different sets of characteristics, um, we can think of a little thought experiment where you have two identical plants, so the same genetic make makeup. You put one of them in a tropical climate and one of them in a harsher temperate climate, and the two growth forms that result will be really different. The one in the harsher environment will flower quicker, will be stunted, uh, will likely produce less cannabinoids and terpenes than the one in a tropical environment that can grow longer, has a lot more resources, uh, and will be, as a result, much more potent. Um, by contrast, uh, you can have a different set of genes, so very different plants, and put them in a harsh environment, and the resultant plants will all look the same. They will all produce the same cannabinoids and compounds, so that's the environment selecting on a phenotype. Uh, recent genetic work has partitioned cannabis into six different groups based on their genes or uh, sets of alleles. And those groups are hemp, CBD type, Afghani or skunk type, uh, berry type, and then also land race types. And some of you will be familiar with uh, cannabis that you've uh, consumed from all of those different types except maybe hemp. And so berry types are a relatively new combination of genes. Um, so they'll be sweet smelling, fruity, have more energetic sativa-like effects. Uh, hemp is a tall, slender plant that is mostly fibrous and produces lots of seeds. Land race are escaped genes that have locally adapted in a given environment. Um, and you might get a lot of rare or novel cannabinoids and terpenes as a result. So every single uh, different classification of cannabis, the resulting plants have very different growth forms, flowering times, and different cannabinoids that they produce. Here to, to start with the distinction that hemp is actually one of six major groupings for uh, cannabis sativa. And really what's special about that genetic population is that they have the genes that can upregulate CBD acid synthase, but not THC acid synthase. So a Canadian taxonomist, uh, Dr. Ernest Small, was the first one to put a, a guideline and a definition on hemp, and that said it has less than 0.3% THC, so there really is no psychoactive component of hemp. Hemp in general has a lot less CBD content than other CBD producing groups and uh, it's because hemp invests a lot of its carbon into fiber and seed production rather than trichome development. So the drug producing types of cannabis that people are familiar with that produce THC upregulate and produce a lot more trichomes. So there's a lot more cannabinoid and resin production. So because of CBD's popularity, Breeders started realizing that you could cross CBD producing plants with the THC type cultivars and by crossing them you would get a set of plants that are able to produce high concentrations of trichomes and resins and have about 10 times the amount of CBD uh, content in the floral tissues compared to hemp. So hemp will have CBD contents between 0.5 and 4% uh, by mass and CBD type plants will have about 
at 10 to even 20% CBD. And there's all kinds of different ratios of THC and CBD. So now when you're extracting those cannabinoids from uh, hemp type plants versus all the other CBD type producing plants, you need a lot more biomass from the hemp because it has less concentrated CBD to get the same amount of CBD as you would from the other set of CBD producing plants. So the real problem with this uh, is that the oil that you get as a result has a higher potential to have contaminants in it. So undesirable things like flavonoids, uh, chlorophyll, and because hemp is often grown in industrial marginal areas that are contaminated, you also run the risk of having those contaminants be in the oil where the cannabinoids are derived from. Just like the concentration of uh, cannabinoids and specifically CBD being a lot less in hemp, the content of terpenes is also to the same extent much less than other uh, types of cultivars of, of cannabis. So the oil that you're getting uh, extracted from the biomass is going to have a lot less terpenes than oil extracted from uh, CBD type cultivars. And not only will you have a lot less terpenes, but the terpene profiles are a lot more unstable in hemp because hemp is one of the oldest domesticated forms of cannabis. And comes from a wide set of genotypes, whereas the drug-producing THC uh, crosses with CBD hemp plants have a much narrower set of genes, and therefore the terpenes that it expresses are uh, much more stable. So the oil that you're getting from CBD type plants has a much more consistent terpene profile that has a higher concentration than oil derived from hemp producing plants with much less terpenes that are more unstable.